those reflections there. Well, Kofi Annan was once described as a friend to thousands and a leader to millions, and one person who had a very, very personal perspective on Kofi Annan is, of course, his son mentioned by Amina there, Kojo. Kojo, um, do come up and speak on behalf of the family. Thank you. And renewed condolences, of course, on behalf of everybody. Uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. <clears throat> it's a privilege for me to be here today with you in Abidjan, paying tribute to my father as Mo Ibrahim launches the Ibrahim Governance Weekend for 2019. Mo was a good friend of my late father and a man for whom my father had immense respect. They shared similar values and beliefs, respect people everywhere, and they go all about all they do with grace and humility. At the Mo Ibrahim Governance Weekend a few years ago, my father was one of the guests of honor, and it was his birthday during the weekend. So I recall they sang happy birthday to him, led by a relatively unknown musician called Bono. He would have been, he would have been actually 81 this coming Monday, 8th of April. Um, I'd just like to say that the, the, the tribute video that the foundation, that the Ibrahim Foundation put together earlier was very moving for me and I'm sure if Nan and my sister had been here, um, Nan sends her regrets because she's had to take care of her mother. Um, they would have been just as touched as I was by the lovely video. Um, I mean, her speech as well, incredible and most speech really touching for us and the, the family. Many won't know that when my father first ran for Secretary General late in um, 1996, the French government initially vetoed his candidacy at the Security Council of the UN on the basis that they primarily wanted a Francophone and possibly even an Ivorian, Amari, Amara Essi. They also mainly doubted my father's capacity to engage and speak in French. Sans l'ombre d'un doute. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt, they didn't know that among his friends, the closest collaborators were, in fact, personalities from the Francophone world, from Lomé to Cotonou all the way to Abidjan and Dakar. Allow me to uh, pay tribute to the professional relations, but also uh, warm, friendly relations that my father and Madame Nan Anand shared with the, I'm sorry, with the distinguished president of uh, Cote d'Ivoire, His Excellency, Mr. Alassane Ouattara, and the First Lady, Mrs. Dominique Ouattara. For Kofi Annan, the tongue, the language of Molière was something that he was well versed in and he taught me and my sisters and also my brother TJ to practice with comfort uh, that similar of that of a Parisian. The French were amongst my father's strongest supporters and years later awarded him with the Légion d'honneur, the highest title in their land. I tell this little story to show the remarkable capacity he had to turn a perceived weakness into a strength, a skill and trait that we can all learn from. Those who know me know that I like to use sporting analogies because I believe they contain many rich lessons and can be applied beyond the field and into many different sectors. Sports doesn't see color or religion or tribe. It is truly merit meritocratic. It only sees greatness. Sports an order of chivalry, a code of ethics, and aesthetics, recruiting its members from all classes and all peoples. Sport is education, the truest form of education, that of character. To win, you have to be the best, and my dad was indeed a winner, a world champion, an Africa 10. He represented integrity, and he represented dignity. He represented excellence, and he represented unity. 
He combined passion with self-discipline, skill with determination, and faced any defeat with unbending resilience. Excellence is about waking up every morning and getting it done. Performance under pressure. Excellence is formed by repetition. The countless hours of practice you, you are ready to go before you are ready to go onto the world stage. He raised the standards of those on his team because his own personal bar was so high. Kofi Annan was a great Africa 10 champion. Mandela was a great Africa 10 champion. We have a continent teeming with champions, from Weya to Drogba, from Yaya Toure to Okocha, from Yusu Ndor to Wizkid, from Chimamanda to Lupita, from David Ajay to Idris Elba, from President Ouattara to President Akufado, from Mo Ibrahim to Aliko and Dangote, from Tijan Tia to Akin Adeshino. There are African champions everywhere. there's often a debate between nature and nurture. Natural talent as opposed to training, coaching, and hard work. Africa has long been resource rich and outcome poor. Gold, silver, diamonds, oil, they're all abundant. And yet, these resources haven't been enough to lift the continent out of poverty. Perhaps because as African countries focus on natural resources, they've overlooked the most important resource. We believe that Africa's most promising productive, and transformational natural resource is the continent's youth. Everywhere you look in Africa, people under 21 make up the largest demographic cohort. In some countries, the cohort is greater than 50% of the population. This is the new generation, restless, optimistic, irrepressible, and creative. This is the generation that will, determine, that will define Africa's promise and determine its future. However, what is this generation missing? Mentorship. The youth need, need an insight into how Aliko Dangote did it. How did Strive do it? How did you do it, Mo? How did Tijan Tian become the CEO of Credit Suisse? The greats in the room and across Africa need to mentor our young people. What do you have in common? One thing I'm sure of is determination. Hard work, hard work, hard work self-belief, can-do spirit, all the champions have it. Confucius once said, the will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential, these are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. I can sh share a minor insight here from a key point that I have learned, and I was just discussing this earlier with um, Hosh, Mo's son, that since the passing of my dad, has taught me that time waits for no man or woman. Time is the most precious commodity we have and we can't control. How we treat time says a great deal about our readiness to take on life itself. My father's timing was absolutely impeccable. 10 a.m. meant 10 a.m. Not 10 past 10, not 10.07, not 10.30, but 10 a.m. If you are meeting him, even as family, you are fearful to be late. I've improved my timing because of that. <laughs> he simply did not have time to waste, and he would not waste your time, and thus would not tolerate his time being wasted. In Africa today, if you go and see a minister or a very high-level official for a 10 a.m. meeting, he might see you at 2 p.m. And you might feel quite fortunate about that. <laughs> Others might not see him until 6 p.m., or even the next day. In social events, when we say, come for a party at 8 p.m., folks can stroll in at 11 p.m. as if no issue and no care in the world. We become a product of our environment. The knock-on effect is far more disastrous than we realize as we waste so much of our productivity waiting or making others wait. The Africa 10 champion Denzel Washington once said, life is like a game of basketball. You have four quarters, zero to 20, first quarter, 20 to 40, second quarter, then it's half time. Third quarter, 40 to 60 is the third quarter, 60 to 80 is the fourth quarter. Anything over 80 is overtime. 
I will add that if you're very lucky, you get another 10 or 15 years of overtime. But if you're very unlucky, you might not make it to half time. Injuries can happen at any time from zero to 80. Some we recover from, some as career ending. My dad, in typical fashion, bowed out in textbook fashion at 80. He played the game of life to the maximum and achieved very well-deserved global respect. His impact was immeasurable, and he rests in the pantheons of greatness. In tribute to my father, my message to all of us, to my family and my friends, and to my beloved continent, is that time is going. Dan Gauthier doesn't waste time. Adenuga doesn't waste time. Strive and Mo don't waste time. Bill Gates doesn't waste time. Just a few years ago, I thought I was a young, cool cat. After my dad's passing, it fully dawned on me that I myself am already in the third quarter. We need collective action. We need 10 Kofi Annans. We need 10 Nelson Mandela's, 10 Drogba's, 10 Mo Ibrahim's, 10 Strive's, 10 Akin Adesino's, 10 Dangote's, 10 Chimamandas, et cetera, et cetera, 10 Drogba's. Africa 10, the power of 10. It's about creating 10s who go on to create 10 times the impact, impact that is exponential and transformational by an order of magnitude. One champion inspires the next. In America, when they had Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they didn't sit still. Jeff Bezos came with Amazon. Zuckerberg is right behind them, and he's still only 35. You have Elon Musk coming. After Jordan, you had Kobe Bryant. And before he retired, LeBron James had already taken over. We need to mentor, inspire, and prepare the next generation of African cha champions. The talent is there. We have to let them prosper. Barack Obama said, we did not come to fear the future. We came here to shape it. My father shaped his future in so many ways, not least the Millennium Development Goals, the Global Fund, the Global Compact, literally saving millions of human lives the history will document for decades to come. This was achieved by a remarkable Ghanaian who was able to lead and galvanize collective will. It's now time for us collectively to continue shaping the African future and fast. We have to become urgent about all we do. The clock is ticking. My father said change is a process which has to be managed. So let us Africans and friends of Africa come together in his honor and manage the change. Change the story of Africa. Change the narrative from poor and impoverished to successful and abundant. Now is the time for action. He taught me to walk with my head held high wherever I am and my back straight and my chest out. My pride is inside. Not with arrogance, but with an innate self-assurance, as he said himself in one of his more popular quotes, to live is to choose, but to choose well, you must know who you are and what you stand for, where you want to go, and why you want to get there. Another lesser known quote from him, he said that Africa is a continent that is blessed. We are not a poor continent. We are a very rich continent with lots and lots of poor people. We can do something about this through leadership, through education, through preparation, and through inspiration. Let's ponder and think deeply about that. A very rich continent with lots of poor people. Some years ago, my wife and I were discussing the notion of the Langoras Prefecture. For those who don't know, it was what was historically used to describe Africa, the lazy man's perfume, sluggishly slothful, torpid and lethargic. Going back to the beginning of my speech, how can we turn perceived weakness into indisputable strength? In the same vein as my father perfected his French relations upon becoming Secretary General, Roger Federer finally conquered his backhand at the Australian Open a few years ago. His single-handed backhand that had long been ruthlessly targeted as his weakness by Nadal and Djokovic is now a weapon of match-winning destruction. He now plays with a freedom of expression that was never there before. Go for it. Play life without fear. Nike said, just do it, not just think about it. This is the message for Africa. In the era of the fourth industrial revolution, we have to turn our large, youthful, 
unemployed population into our strength. We have to equip them, educate them, and unleash them. What's important is unity and excellence. Excellence takes work, it takes vision and focus. But we are determined with Africa 10 to prepare the future generation, not only on the field, but as my father said, also give them education and prepare them for their future lives. Excellence is the new cool. Just last week, my wife and I were blessed with a beautiful baby girl to join her two older brothers. Our team is now complete. <laughs> At that moment that I should have been overjoyed, I was suddenly overwhelmed with sadness as I realized that she would never meet her grandfather. I'm sure he will be with her and guide her in spirit, but her birth only re-emphasized to me the essence, the essence of time. I'm in a rush. My father left me prepared for the future, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. I'm equipped to take responsibility for my family and my children. But how are we leaving the children of Mother Africa? Are they prepared to steer the continent forward? Do they have the tools, the mindset, and the skill set? Are we giving them a chance to win the game of life? The clock is ticking. Gojo, thank you very much indeed for um, that tribute and sharing the lessons learned from your father with us. I'm sure he was and would be very proud of you. Now, our 